What is the most beautiful word in the English language? This is a question likely not so commonly asked in most groups of people, yet when pondered does lend itself to some interesting insights into how and why people derive pleasure from particular words. Some people may prefer the meaning behind their chosen word, whereas others may simply react positively to the sound of it, and sometimes all it takes is the way the chosen word is spelt. Regardless, the question itself can lead to some intriguing answers to how certain words in the English language can be deemed beautiful on their own accord. In 1955, author of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, J.A.R. Tolkien, gave a lecture in Oxford titled English and Welsh where he stated that the compound word cellar door is an example of a beautiful word in the English language, irrespective of the meaning behind it. Most English-speaking people, for instance, will admit that cellar door is beautiful, especially if disassociated from its sense and from its spelling. More beautiful than, say, sky, and far more beautiful than beautiful. What Tolkien meant when using the word beautiful was in regard to phonesthetics, which are the study of the beauty of words from the sounds they produce and Tolkien is often cited as being one of the earliest examples of using this term. But how do you study something as arbitrary and subjective as beauty? Well actually, whilst the question of whether something sounds beautiful or not is down to opinion, research has shown that typically people respond positively to several attributes in words that supposedly give them a euphonious sound. A good example of these attributes are illustrated in a 1995 paper by David Crystal called Phonesthetically Speaking in which David presented three lists made by a poet, author, and lexicographer that displayed the words they consider sonically beautiful, as well as a poll sourced from a 1980 Sunday Times paper on the same topic. In his research, David dissected the reoccurring sonic attributes of the most frequent words popping up in all of his sources, and on gathering his findings, he broke up the attributes into 10 criteria that in theory would create words that are beautiful phonesthetically. If these trends are respectable, given the small sample, it is possible to see how we can create phonesthetically pleasing new words. It would seem advisable to give them three syllables, to stress the first syllable, to use at least one M or L, preferably both, to introduce high frequency consonants and avoid low frequency ones, to have at least three different manners of consonantal articulation, to keep the vowels short, and to have the vowels move from mid towards high and from front towards back. By high frequency consonants, David is referring to L, M, S, N, R, K, T and D, as all of these consonants appeared in the most frequently cited beautiful words in his findings. Secondly, the three different manners of consonantal articulation is essentially having three consonants in the word that are pronounced differently. For example, an oral consonant is the sound produced when using L, R, W and J, whereas nasal consonants are found in N or M. Short vowels as well are any vowel that do not linger when spoken. A long vowel then would be in such a word as far or hour, whereas a short vowel would be pet or lit. Lastly, the mid towards high and from front towards back refers to how the sound ascends or where in your mouth it sits when spoken. For example, an A sits at the front and an M at the back. Once these distinctions in the beautiful words in David's sources were made, he set to finding words that fit all the criteria, and what he found was the word tumultuous was a perfect fit. He even made up some words, such as Ramelon and Demetrol, stating that in theory they would make for phonesthetically pleasing words as they passed all tests. And so, coming back to J.A.R. Tolkien, maybe we could assess the beauty of cellar door through the criteria made by David Crystal. When we do, we see that cellar door passes six of the ten criteria. It has three syllables, stressed first syllable, uses an L twice, uses high frequency consonants, three different manners of articulation, and lastly moves from front to back in the mouth when spoken. In theory then, Celador's score indicates that it is a little above average in its phonesthetic beauty. However, when we take into consideration a quote made by author C.S. Lewis in 1963 on the topic of the Celador debate, we find that the score on David Crystal's test goes up by two points. I was astonished when someone first showed that by writing Celador as Celador, one produces an enchanting proper name. The spelling thus could be the answer to Celador's supposed beauty. 
as its score on David Crystal's 10 criteria increases due to the change in the spelling, eradicating the low frequency consonants whilst also making the vowel shorter. Obviously, these tests have no bearing on the concrete answer of what is the most beautiful word in the English language, because no one word can be whittled down to and agreed by all to be better sounding than the rest, and that is only considering the aesthetic beauty. Regardless though, the legend of Celador as being the answer to the question is still being repeated today. However, whereas most attribute it to J.A.R. Tolkien, and you would be right in saying he popularised the assumption, the earliest accounts of Celador being recognised as a word of beauty dates as far back as the 1903 in the novel G-Boy by Cyrus Lauren Hooper. He was laughed at by a friend, but logic was his as well as sentiment. An Italian savant maintained that the most beautiful combination of English sounds was Celador. No association of ideas here to help out. Sensuous impression merely. The Celador is purely American. The word would later show up and be praised for its beauty in a 1920 H.L. Mencken article, and once again in 1930 by drama critic George Jean, in a satirical poem mocking Gertrude Stein's repetitious style. And from onwards towards present day, the references have resurfaced time and time again, with what I would expect the most popular one being in Donnie Darko in 2001, when Donnie's English teacher has Salador written on the chalkboard. Interested in the reasoning behind this, Donnie asks why it is written on the board, to which she responds, This famous linguist once said that of all the phrases in the English language, of all the endless combination of words in all of history, Salador is the most beautiful. Thus, the debate surrounding Celador continues as well as the quest for the most beautiful word in the English language, and whilst we may tug and pull over the answer for years to come, I would advise against trying to find an answer, and instead rely on your own judgement, for that is as close as you can get. <laughs>